Welcome everyone to another episode of How to Make Money in Stocks with Investors Business Daily. Now, last weekend, you were up with Ken Shreve in San Francisco to do a level two workshop. And sounds like we got some really nice comments on the workshop, of course, and also on the show. Yeah, thank you so much. I enjoyed meeting everybody at the Level 2 workshop. I enjoy, spe- I enjoy being out. I enjoy yeah. meeting our people. Lovely, lovely folks. Very smart in San Francisco. Lots of yes. great questions. A full That's day of a learning. Good city. It yeah. is. It is. Yeah. They're really, they're very inquisitive. Mm-hmm. Anyway, thank you so much. And also thanks to Meetup Leader we have up there from Fremont. We have Ken Chin and his wife that took me out to Chinatown to a really yeah, busy, authentic Chinese right. place. And I had salted fried crab. The whole crab. Sounds delicious. And they serve, they serve this whole big crab to your table and you eat it family style. It was right. very fun. Thank right. you, Ken. That sounds great. Now, on this week's show, we're going to continue. Actually, we're going to conclude our series on how to spot the kind of chart patterns that launch big moves. And we're going to talk about the double bottom. But first, let's take a look at the market. The market had some pluses and some minuses this week. It was good to see the NASDAQ get back above the 50-day, but there was some muted action in breakouts, although there have been some stocks that have been acting well, like Nike. Yep, Mm -hmm. absolutely. And it's not surprising to see that kind of mixed action when you take a look at what the indexes are doing right now. We are in an uptrend, and we've seen a nice string of up days in recent weeks. But look at the 50-day line. It's still trending down, and it's below the 200-day line. That is a sign of weakness, and the NASDAQ may test that 200-day line next week. And it's the same thing on the S&P. But we do have another packed earnings week with Hawaiian Holdings, Chipotle, eBay, Amazon, Dr. Pepper Snapple, Southwest Airlines, and Under Armour all due to report. And there are several large bellwether names that are also due to report next week, including IBM, McDonald's, and Coke. McDonald's. McDonald's hit a new high That's this right. past week. You know, they serve on. breakfast all day. That's right. Although, anyway, <laughs> Microsoft, Verizon, AT&T, Boeing, P&G, and several other big names are also scheduled to report. Also, keep an eye on the distribution days. Now, you don't want too many of these to cluster up close together. If they do, that spells trouble for the market. Right. But one thing you do want to do is keep building your list of stocks that are forming bases and are about to report earnings. One example is Facebook. It's closing in on a potential buy point, and it is expected to report Q3 numbers on November 4th. All right. This is a weekly chart of Google. Known now as Alphabet. I this one's still I have trouble saying <laughs> it, it, I still want to say Google. To I don't want to say Alphabet. Alphabet's like A through Z. Anyway, it's in a price consolidation and the RS line is in new high ground ahead of the breakout. That is always a sign of strength in a stock. And you can find more stocks that are near a potential buy point and about to report by looking at the list like the IBD 50. And there are several names setting up right now. There are indeed. And you can see which companies are due to report earnings by looking at our earnings calendar. And that's in the paper each Monday in the B section. So today is the fifth and final part of our series on how to spot the kind of chart patterns that launch big moves. We've already covered the cup with handle and the flat base, so today we're going to take a look at the double bottom. Now, you can see the other episodes that we've done on bases on our website at Investors.com slash Investing Show. The double bottom base mostly forms when the market is in a correction. It's a little bit more of a violent shakeout. Definitely. Definitely. But this this base leads to some very nice gains in in stocks, which we're going to show you right now. So let's take a look at some basic requirements. As we've noted with all the bases that we've covered, you want to see a prior uptrend of about 30% or more. And that typically happens during the market uptrend. And then the indexes start to pull back. And then the stocks, individual stocks, pull back at the same time. And they start to form a new base. Now, the first thing of the W, the first part of it, it pulls down, and then there's a rally upwards, which forms the middle part or the peak in the W. Then the second leg of the W comes down, and this must go below or undercut the previous leg to form a proper double bottom. Now, the breakout is when the price comes back above that middle peak in the W plus 10 cents. Now, earlier in the series, we talked about support and resistance, and That's absolutely key to understanding how and why bases work. So the first point of resistance is over here. And then, as Amy said, the stock tries to rally but hits resistance again and falls back down. And then finally, it clears that resistance, that second level of resistance, and moves higher. 
Now the length of the double bottom base should be at least seven weeks in length and the depth should be 40% or less. Remember that volume on the breakout should be at least 40 to 50% above average. Now the double bottom structure usually shows an overall choppy market. As we mentioned, this base has more of a violent shakeout at the double bottom. Now, all three patterns that we've covered have a shakeout. It's a very important part of all bases. And the idea is to wear down and push out the weaker, less committed investors. And once they're out of the way, it just makes it that much easier for the stock to move higher without hitting that selling resistance. And the shakeout in the cup with handle is actually the handle. And for the double bottom, the shakeout is when that second leg down undercuts the first leg. And if it doesn't do that, like Amy said, it's really not a proper double bottom. It's not a real double bottom. Now, Matt did a really thorough analysis of these base patterns in his book. It is called How to Make Money in Stocks Getting Started. So be sure to check that out. It's available through Amazon or Barnes & Nobles, and it's helpful for beginners to read through to understand some of the can slim investing systems, some of the bases that we go through. So now let's go to an example here is Netflix. And one quick note, also in Amy's book, you can learn a lot about these patterns as well and then see how actual people, individual investors, handled stocks that formed those patterns. So with Netflix, we're looking back to the summer of 2010 and it had broken out earlier in the year and made a nice run. So that was the uptrend, the prior uptrend. Then as the market became choppy, Netflix also started to form this double bottom. Okay, this is a weekly NASDAQ chart. This is around August 2010. The NASDAQ was choppy during this same time period. Remember again, most bases are formed as the market is correcting. That's what causes the pullback. And this is actually very constructive. So never be discouraged in a market correction because they can lead to some very good gains. I have learned to embrace and really like market corrections. It's part of the process. You need to have that happen in order for a nice big number, uptrend to start. Right. The it's, market can't go up every right. single day. And stocks break out of bases as soon as we have a follow through day and the market begins a new uptrend. Right. Now, go back to Netflix now and look at that double bottom. As you want to see, the second leg down did undercut the first leg down. So that establishes a new potential buy point, which is 10 cents above the peak in the middle of the W. Now, for all bases, as we've mentioned, you add 10 cents to the former area of resistance just to make sure that the stock is actually punching through that ceiling and not bumping up against it. So the stock moved back above the 10-week line, and as we can see from the market pulse, the market was in an uptrend, and we know that stocks followed the general market trend. So now is the time for Netflix to start moving. Now, this particular market rally in August 2010 ended up failing pretty quickly, but we got a big new uptrend that started on September 1st, 2010, and that's when Netflix really took off. It did. Now, we also want to point out that the IBD50 alerted readers to the buy point before the breakout for Netflix. So it noted the type of base, double bottom, and the entry price. So it's a good reminder of why you want to check the IBD list regularly as part of your routine. Okay, let's take a look at Netflix. This is a weekly chart through July 2011. Now, what is pretty exciting is that from this double bottom base in August until July 2011, Netflix gained 158%. And the move was mostly contained above the 10-week line, except for two bases that were formed as it was nearing the top. And even then, it found support pretty quickly. It found support, and the RS line kept moving into new high ground. So let's take a quick break and then we'll see more examples of the double bottom and how it can launch some really nice moves. Like an edge that helps you pick winning stocks faster. An edge that is proven to outperform the S&P 500 by 76% since inception and that you can take advantage of today without spending a dime. More on that in a minute. Each day, our top market team at Investors Business Daily scans our proprietary stock lists and screens to find superior stocks with the most potential for big gains. They analyze these stocks every step of the way to show you bases, buy points, sell signals, and the right time to take profits. It's about as close to hold your hand investing as you can get. Introducing Leaderboard by Investors Business Daily. For a limited time, you can try all of the premium features Leaderboard has to offer for a full 14 days at absolutely no cost to you. 
you'll receive unlimited access to all of the time-saving research, powerful investing tools, the leaders list, cut list, and expert analysis you need to develop a winning investing strategy. And it's all 100% free for your first 14 days. We've talked about basis forming during market corrections. Now, in the case of 2008, mm -hmm. there were some pretty nasty and very deep bases that really yes. didn't even look like bases. And it reflects what was going on in the index. It reflects it's a exactly. very deep decline. But as we said, yeah. the, the stocks will actually mirror what's going on in the indexes. Right. And so because the market had pulled back so sharply, a lot of stocks, re recently we've seen this too, that flash crash type, type of action right. has made a lot of bases look very, very sloppy. So they don't really look quite right. Right. Now, another interesting period to look at is the middle of 2013. Now, here's the S&P 500. During that time, you can see how it was showing some very choppy action. And as we said, it's in that kind of environment that you'll see a lot of double bottoms form. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Okay, this is Vipshop. This is a weekly chart, 2013. Now, Vipshop Holdings was a monster mover. This is a Chinese online retailer, and it soared for week after week until it formed a double bottom base in June and July of 2013. And then it broke out of that base, and it moved even higher. Right, and there's probably some people out there saying, well, thanks, Amy and Matt, for that 2020 hindsight <laughs> yeah. on stocks yeah. that took off. Now we know that. But... It doesn't have to be 2020 hindsight. If you are regularly checking the IBD screens, like we showed for Netflix earlier in the mm -hmm. show, and you're doing your homework, then you can find stocks that are forming bases ahead of time. For example, in the July 16, 2016 issue of the Market Pulse, Vipshop was listed as one of the leaders up in volume. And the big picture column that goes with the Market Pulse noted that the stock was forming a double bottom. So it's one way you could have put this stock on your watch list for further research. All right, here's Vipshop. This is the breakout 2013, and then what happened afterwards. Vipshop broke out July 17th on volume that was 62% above average. And then the next day, it had another volume spike, and volume was higher by 67%. This is exactly, classically, what you want to see. Professional money going in at the breakout, and then right afterwards, the more volume you see, the better. Absolutely. Vipshop went on to make a 42% gain. Very nice. Mm -hmm. We'd like to book those profits before pulling back to the 50-day, to the and then it started to move higher again. And around the same time, Facebook was also working on a double bottom. And this was after it had that famously disappointing IPO, and it had posted several quarters of slowing growth. But as it was getting to report earnings, it had formed the second leg down, undercutting the first leg down in the base. So let's take a look at that chart. Facebook gapped up July 25th and rose 30% on volume that was 749% above average. This is just a monster, monster move. Now, that was your institutional buying, and this was after it reported earnings, as Matt said, and then it started to scream higher. Right. Now, normally, the buying range is up to 5% above the buy point. But as Amy noted, Facebook gapped up to start the day well beyond that price. And as we noted earlier in this series, when we were looking at Under Armour, you can buy into a gap up like this in an institutional quality stock if it's on huge volume and all the other pieces of the buying puzzle are in place. Now, Facebook ran up 34% from the breakout in the double bottom. Remember, we start with 10 cents higher than, than the high in the middle peak of the W. So you can see again and again that stocks make great moves out of bases that are formed during corrections, and they begin moving higher when the market is in a nice new uptrend. And that was the case for Facebook. And after that double bottom breakout, it formed more bases as it continued to move higher. Amberella is another stock that formed a double bottom around the same time, and it had the second leg down, then broke out to a big run, and it rose over 60% in about four months. Now, earlier this week, Paul Whitfield wrote an article titled, Choppy Has a Good Side. 
double bottoms. Yes. This was uh, an industry themes snapshot of the double bottom base. Oh, this article was in the industry themes. And he pointed out some stocks that may be forming double bottom bases. So let's take a look at Acuity Brands. Acuity provides LED lighting products and has been shaping this double bottom formation. You can see how the second leg undercut the first, and that provides that all-important shakeout of weaker holders. One thing that's very nice to note are the huge spikes in volume. Three days in a row, and this came after the stock reported earnings, which rose 29 percent. Sales were higher by 14 percent. And the building construction group has an A-plus rating, and the composite rating is the highest possible at a 99. Now, like all stocks, Acuity is affected by how the major indexes perform. So if this current general market fails to gain traction and stumbles, it can be tough for Acuity or any other stock to break out and climb. Another thing to note is that sometimes double bottoms will form a handle, and Acuity just did that. It takes five days to form a handle, just like the cup with handle. And it just did that. Friday was day five, and that creates a buy point. You add 10 cents to the peak in the handle. Now, be sure to check out our whole series here on how to read bases to learn more about them. And you can find all of the series that we've done yep. on charts right. on our website at Investors.com slash Investing Show. I have here, Matt, a really lovely pen. This was given to me by Susan and Greg. They are two meetup leaders. Remember, I had the San Francisco Level 2 last weekend. I can't read that writing. And I, well, and I'm I not like sure what, you can either. I like, well, Give hey, it your best hey, shot. hey, hey, you would challenge my eyesight. <laughs> hey, watch it here. All right, on here it says exploration, observation, right. experience, gather, thrive, share, and repeat. Life's recipe. Nice. That's kind of nice. Thank you very much. Lovely pen from these great meetup leaders, and thanks to all the meetup groups out there. You do a great job. And if you're not involved in your own local meetup, you can find out more about it on our website as well as check out notes for today's episode, and that's at investors.com slash investing show. All right. See you next week, everybody.